So brothers, I thank y'all for joining us. There's a lot of conversations out there. And I, and I want to give you guys the opportunity to kind of like touch on some of these issues that people are having dialogue about on social media, um, in concerts, in churches, or whatever. Obviously, there's a lot of concern about the platform by which a lot of Christian hip hop was built. Mm. More specifically, each record is being built on this idea of being unashamed for the gospel. Mm -hmm. We've done songs, concerts, <clears throat> and as you guys continue to grow the platform, people say, man, you built this platform on unashamed, but now I feel like you guys have gone away from that. Kind of answer those kind of critics uh, are the people who may not be critics necessarily, but they're just kind of confused. Like, how do you help those people wrestle through those tensions of that particular question? Well, well Tasha, you were there from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, I, I can't front. I'm a little... <clears throat> so there are people who would say, from afar, you guys have become this now. Mm -hmm. And I would say to people, just as a... You know, person who um, is an artist all the time, but I'm, you know, I'm a, a believer, a husband, a, a father, and and I would say, how do you know that? Like, where where are you getting that from? And if it's if it's just, you know, from the music itself, or from what you hear or see from afar, um, then I would first challenge people to ask more questions, kind of get a better understanding of where it is they're they're asking the questions from. Um, because I can appreciate someone having genuine concern. Uh, there's another problem, and I think that's where um, the angst within me rises up, where I see more frustration from people based on illegitimate grounds versus here's who you are now. Um, <clears throat> and I'm not saying that you know everyone can just come and have a conversation and their, their questions be answered. Maybe perhaps that's why we're doing this. Uh, but at the end of the day, I, I know, first and foremost, that's a event of mine, I, I would love for people to be able to peer in and investigate more versus seeing one action and defining the totality of who I've been the last nine years of music as this one act. Uh, so. No, yes. You, you specifically came in somewhat in the transition at that yeah. period. Of, yeah. So kind of speak to your kind of perspective coming in as it was transitioning and changing and to probably how you've kind of defended your philosophy and what you're doing and how you're maneuvering within this genre. Yeah. It's such a, it's such a big conversation and long conversation that like, and we have it so often. Are you tired us. of that thing? No, no. Okay. I, I just, I'm, I'm hard pressed to know which aspect to share. Yeah. Because we talk about it so much internally and think through it that sometimes when we present it publicly, it's like kind of a lofty yeah. talk and sometimes people are like, I don't even know what you... Some people came in to listen to our music at the later years and they're like, I don't even know why everybody's mad about it in the first place, you know what I'm saying? True. So, uh, I think what you were getting at was um, when, when Reach Records and the whole 116 movement kind of started, there was a high emphasis on like um, being explicit about who Jesus was in the music and sharing a lot of scriptures and um, I think what's happened is like as we've grown as people and grown as artists and, and philosophies have changed and ideas have changed, still obviously being rooted in scripture in the Christian faith, um, like people have started to question obviously, right, the, the yeah. motives of why we're doing what we're doing or why the music is tackling certain issues now and more aimed towards the non-believer. Uh, than just in, sh exclusively encouraging the Christian, right? The people that are emotionally invested is because they, like the music that we first came, that, you know, Craig and all these guys first came out with literally, like, helped disciple and change their life. So anytime it started shifting, it, it's this huge, like, insecurity for them. Like, what is happening to some of the men that helped invest in me spiritually, you know? Mm -hmm. Didn't have, for me, I was, I was one of those one of those guys who didn't have a pastor or dad around. So I was listening to the truth and ambassador and these guys and learning about scripture and Jesus through rap music. So, yeah. so historically, like, there's a lot of support for the argument that there is no real, like, secular, sacred. You know, we can say church history, we've seen, mm -hmm. like, there were secular mis ministries. You know, we have artists who, whether they be visual arts or, you know, musical arts that navigated in both worlds. But a lot of times that's not enough for people. Like they, right. they're not satisfied with the historical perspective yeah. of, of apologetics towards the support of this. <clears throat> so biblically, like 
How do you guys give people a, a support of your stance, of our stance? Mm. Say that. Because mm. <laughs> we learned all this from you. We did. We did. <laughs> <laughs> how do you guys, how do you guys uh, give a biblical support for what you do? Um, well, first I would say I, I haven't seen a lot of support for anything otherwise. Mm. You know, um, a lot of times people will use scriptures um, like Ephesians, don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly or be unevenly yoked, and they use those out of context. And so, you know, walking in the counsel of the ungodly or joining forces is me going and participating in things of, in evil things with them. It's like, hey, let's hold hands and do sin. Um, and that's not what we're doing. Um, being unevenly yoked, and all, you know, that, this stuff doesn't have, has, is not pertaining to, to uh, the art world or anything. Oh, so I think those are some of the issues, but I, I haven't seen anything um, counter to what we're doing. Um, I've only seen in the scriptures things that include a lot of what we're doing when you when you um, look at the book of Ruth and you, you know, or um, Daniel, you know, yeah, uh, you look at Joseph and you look at these, these characters and you see them participating in culture uh, for the glory of God instead of um, shunning culture, right? Like Joseph made sure all of Egypt was fed and all the surrounding lands um, under Pharaoh. Um, he didn't say, well, you know what? I'm going to do this on my own and start my ministry and I'm only feeding the people who want to worship God. You yeah. know, he was for the betterment of the culture as a whole and he was integrated in it. And so, and I, and I look historically as well and Christians historically contributed to culture by invading it and being a part of it and helping it and, and ushering in education and ushering in um you know helps and social services and things along those lines um no i agree i i think um for me so one one conversation i had recently someone brought you know first corinthians 15 33 um, bad company corrupts good morals um and so in context the verse is speaking paul is closing the letter and shining light on way more than just my in interaction with somebody who may not love Jesus, um, but to the picture as a whole of um, be careful that you know your own lifestyle walk with belief, with, with Jesus, your love for Him um, doesn't begin to fade or, or eventually prove that that you never were with Him because you um, are with this other person. And so, um, two things: one. I know for me personally, I'm, I more so look to people and say, um, if your support and your excitement about what you think was is now less because you disagree, I would hope that would generate a sense of concern and prayer more than it would attack and abuse. Um, because I never saw Jesus do that either. Um, I never saw any person. It, it, most of the time, um, Israel's l goal of engaging culture, changing the world um, one nation at a time failed because they began to look like them, not because they were around them engaging them. Um, and so I would hope that those prayers would begin to happen from the saints for us and for every person who's wrestling with the idea of how do I engage culture for Jesus without looking or becoming but you like are looking coaching. like them you're wearing well, your hat so to the back stuff, you got sure. tattoos and then now you know you're making songs like last goodbye i barely heard jesus in that song you you're looking like them bro he's like yes i am i am, <laughs> I am. oh my goodness that's oh, awesome so so let's let's take it outside of just the hip-hop the reality of it is it's right like the guy who works for for apple he right. works just like everybody else that works right. at apple what's right. the distinguishing difference between the guy who works at apple who wants to make sure he's a light and you who looks like every other artist who's on the top 10 charts but looks is, is shining like jesus yeah um hmm. So I have a friend who works at Apple. Um, and so we talk about this often. His goal is to, of course, see people come to know Jesus. Um, that's his heart, that's his passion. I wanna share Jesus with people who, who don't know Jesus. Um, and in that world, he has obligations to the job that hired him. He has responsibilities to the customers that walk in. And so we have to wrestle with, when does your agenda somehow begin to show itself 
while you also handle in excellence the responsibility given to you. Now, someone would say, well, no, he's a Christian, just share Jesus. As soon as you meet him, just share Jesus, then get fired, then don't make money, <laughs> and then be home broke, and now we mad at you for a different reason. So Persecuted, man. It's yeah. persecution. So, so at the end of the day, <laughs> we was persecuted. Oh, it's so perfect. Yeah. So at the end of the day, not, not to be you know yeah. somewhat sarcastic, but just to say, there has to be an acceptance of the fact that when you work at that place, they're not going to see you in any different light, save the Lord by spirit, shekining the light of glory upon you. At the end of the day, um, there, there'll have to be your proactiveness as you look like them. You're wearing the uniform, you ha you're using the same lingo. When they walk in, they see you as help or service. They don't see you as human being half the time, and you have to be proactive. Or they see you as co-worker, they don't see you as person who loves Jesus and you have to be proactive as you look like them, sound like them, dress like them to be able to say, I'm going yeah. to go beyond, above and beyond in wisdom on how I share that. Excellence you know is amazing evangelism. Right. Yeah. Like even excellence right. and yeah.